Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links for PC and mobile. Released in North America on November 17th, 2016, this game takes Yu-Gi-Oh! and cuts it in half, leaving plenty of flaws and perks in its wake. Playing through OG Duel Monsters to currently Arc V... Wait, this sounds familiar. This game allows you to play as the main characters from the shows, and even some side characters, going as far as to play in the world they come from. There's even events constantly allowing more to be unlocked all the time. That's enough of the service, let's get to the nitty gritty. This game is exactly as I said. Yu-Gi-Oh! Cut in half. This means... That X-Eyes is limited to 30 max. The field is limited to 6 spots total, not including the field spell zone. And life points are reduced to 4,000 like in the anime. These may sound like drawbacks, but honestly, it could be good fun and make some cards that would be mediocre in the standard game excel here, bringing forth loads of creativity. Some positive things to make note of. They brought back card summon animations. Each character you play as has a list of skills. You can use one during the duels to give you an advantage. The characters are voice acted, which surprised me the first time I played. I swore I said this before. There's loads of cards to choose from and varieties from OG to early arc V. The options are and I swear I'm having deja vu. Okay, let's focus on something else. I got it. So rewards are interesting here. You earn a lot just by playing the game, which is great. Characters have levels that you can unlock to earn rewards, currency, and even special items. You also earn from dueling NPCs and yourself, aka Vagabond, known to every other game in existence. This game also loves giving out gifts, from card vouchers to currency to buy things. Onward to the shop. This card shop isn't the best, but it has its benefits. The positives include... You get to see what you're getting along with knowing the chances for getting the card. There's loads of packs to pick, and even deck boxes. There's special select card boxes that have extra rare cards to obtain, and plenty of customization options in card sleeves and mats. Now, onto the negatives. So with no surprise, I favor earning my cards and ways to buy them. That being said, this game doesn't shy away from buying currency to get better cards so you win easier. Honestly, buying cards is inevitable, but luckily for me, I've done so to this day completely without a single microtransaction, so it's possible with a dash of luck. Finally, to top everything off, a subject I've never talked about. Multiplayer. A good handful of the games I've gone over had some form of multiplayer at one point or another, but in every case, the next generation of consoles released. Players migrated, and the game stopped supporting online play. But for Duel Links, it's still very accessible and allows others to play currently. And play on the go. Now it goes without saying, a card game is roughly a competitive game, where you match not only wits, but chance, with cards and playing them alike. But the competitive side of things can be very cutthroat, and not new player friendly. You can expect plenty of people with powerful cards and strategies that can find plenty of new and creative ways to beat you into submission. It's easy to forget how punishing the franchise can be by only playing solo. But, if you're up for a challenge, go in for the plunge. As a little pin attached to this topic, there's plenty of events in-game that changes things up in vastly different ways, even bringing in... tag... duels. Well now I'm upset, they show that they can basically release a new tag force, yet they don't. Well, could be worse. They could reboot the series with wacky rules and have characters that resemble Ape Escape. Oh my god! Now, I'd like to talk about my experience shortly about this and any current games like it. One of the core rules of card games is to have fun, obviously. But particularly in order to have fun, you have to actually play the game. Sometimes cards and strategies can disable a lot of other cards and basically deny you or an opponent from playing altogether. And speaking from experience, it's definitely not fun. I'm not about to dictate how things can be fixed, or even if it can. Future of the games can possibly change, but it obviously favors and encourages spending lots of money to have a chance at being great. 
It's this knowledge that brought this video to life. You can do what you want. If you want to throw money at Yu-Gi-Oh to get cards that obviously wreck anything in your path, that's fine. I definitely gotten attached to some cards that spank Cheek so hard people feel it next week. But there's nothing wrong with stepping away. I want to encourage you to try out one of the games I've talked about in these videos, where things weren't as complicated as they are now. Where we didn't have to have unbeatable boards that you have to bring something just as OP to have a chance. And most importantly, actually having fun. Because at the end of the day, that's why I play. To have fun. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you for hearing out everything I had to say. I'd like to thank everyone who helped out with the reviews, the scripts for this project. Thank the cool people that hopefully allowed me to use their footage. Thank Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole. Because a lot of my youth was spent enthralled with you. Thank you again, and with all that being said, for lack of a better outro, I'll see you next video. Later.